Okay, brother, let's move on now. Um, let's go to uh, Isaiah 53.6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Okay, it says that we've all gone astray. Um, gone astray, uh, that seems to me like someone is going not God's way, but a different way, maybe their own way. We're choosing not to follow God and live for God, but to live for ourselves do our own thing. We've gone astray from God. Do you have any other take on that? Very interesting. And, and, and now Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And it says here, um, it says, uh, for all. Um, all. All we like sheep have gone astray. So, um, universally, everyone um, has gone astray. If we connect that to the point we made in the, uh, the first video, the, uh, the idea that we are, are spiritually disconnected from God, and... Um, and then we, we all go astray. Mm -hmm. So it, it seems to me that it is inevitable that um, um, at some point, as, we're, as it, when we're born, we reach an age where we understand what's right and wrong, and yet we all go astray. We all choose to do the wrong things. There are no exceptions. And it, that's because we're not connected to God anymore. We're just going by our own ways. Yes. Um. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's the next verse in Romans 3.23. So uh, we all um, have that that sinful nature that's been passed on. So to kind of recap this, uh, we were all born with this uh, body, mind, and a spirit that is disconnected or dead. We're dead spiritually. And... Uh, because of that, it seems inevitable that everyone is going to go do their own thing, go astray, instead of um, uh, loving and, uh, and following God. We all, everybody does. It seems inevitable. It says all. Yeah, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So it's universal. Um, uh, we've all went astray and, uh, and have rebelled against God. Well, if we move on to the next uh, point here, uh, let's go to our, uh, Revelation 21, 27, and you can see the predicament we're in. Revelation 21, 27. 21. 21, 27. Yes. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh an abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Okay, so no abomination, lies, it sounds to me like it's talking about various types of sin, and none of that will enter in. This is worth talking about heaven, right? Yes. So the conclusion I get from that verse is that no sin will be allowed in heaven. So heaven is a perfect facility. It's a no sin zone. <laughs> yeah, good. No, right. A no sin zone. That's a good way of looking at it. There's, there's no. It's like you, you have a sign above the gates of heaven that says no sin allowed. So, but the problem is, you see that we already uh, earlier established that every person has sinned, and yet there's no sin allowed in heaven. Well, that means to me we can't enter. No one can enter. So if you have one sin on you, and I have a thousand, you're not going to enter. And, and wait a second, not wait a second. if you've got a thousand sins and I've only got one, well, I'm certainly better than you, so why can't I get in? Because uh, it says no sin allowed. <laughs> not even one. Right. Not even one. You see the seriousness of this. So we meet a lot of people that uh, they, they are self-righteous and they think, well, they're not as bad as some other people and, and therefore they're going to get into heaven. Uh, but the fact is... Uh, no one can get into heaven because we've all sinned. That is the situation man finds himself in. It is, scripture says, do not be deceived. The righteous, excuse me, do not be deceived. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. And the Bible says there's no one righteous. No, not one. Mm -hmm. So we, we have a problem. Yes. Well, uh, 
if we look at heaven as this not, uh, sin-free zone, um, an analogy I like to use is let's say that it's like sin is like a, a virus on us. Uh, or let's say you have boils and a virus on you. Every sin causes this boil and virus on your body. And you get up to the gates of heaven and it says, no sin allowed. You can't bring your sin, your virus, and contaminate heaven. So that means you have to be kept out. You have to be actually quarantined. And we call that place where you're quarantined and separated. Help. So let's move on to the verses to talk about that. Result is hell. Romans 6.23. Let me shoot over to there. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, so the result of the sin is we, we die. That's bad news. We die. And let's move on to the next verse then. After we die, what happens? Matthew, Matthew 13.42. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Okay, that is uh, Jesus describing hell. Uh, so I hope now the viewers here are beginning to see the problem that man is facing here. Uh, we were born wrong, kind of with a birth defect, uh, uh, spiritually disconnected from God. Uh, and it is inevitable that we, we end, all of us end up sinning. I know some sin much more than others, but as we established, even one sin disqualifies you and you can't get into heaven. So the default position, the place you need to be kept out of heaven, you can't bring your sin and contaminate heaven, so you have to be separated and kind of quarantined into this place that he describes as a lake of fire. That's hell. So you're so the sinner and uh, your sin is going to yeah. you're going to end up in hell, right? Well, there's the problem, but uh, I don't want to leave the viewers, uh, uh, you know, thinking there's no solution. In the next video, we're going to start discussing the solution to this problem. Okay.